All right, let's start off this hypothesis test that they're asking for here um, at the 0.05 level significance. Let's start off with creating some hypotheses. So remember, you always need to show all six steps when you're doing these problems. And if I were you and I wanted full credit on a problem like this on an exam, I'd make sure to clearly mark them as step one, step two, and so on. All right, so let's start with our hypotheses. H0, which is our null hypothesis, is mu equal to, now we assume that it's 5.72, unless we can prove it otherwise. The alternative to that is based off of this word right here, different. Now because it says different, that implies not equal to, because we're not making a decision about whether we think it's more or less, we just think it's different than 5.72. So there's your null and alternative hypotheses. In case you missed it, you're doing a two-tailed test. All right, then step two, alpha. Everybody's favorite step, because alpha is given in the problem as 0 0.05 right here. Once I give the level of significance, that's your alpha. So step one and two are done. Step three, you need to come up with a test statistic. So that's T0 equals, and then that you can use the formula, X bar minus mu0 over S divided by the square root of N. Okay. Now, let's see here. We need to know X bar, S, and the square root of N would come from the sample size, so we're going to need to know a whole bunch. The only thing I do know right off the bat is that I know that it's minus 5.72 because mu zero, the zero comes from the null hypothesis. So if you look at your null hypothesis, you assumed 5.72 in that null hypothesis. So mu zero is that value, but I'll have to figure out everything else. All right, so to do that, we could do it a couple different ways. I think I'll do the way that you guys know. Of course, I have them right there in the graph, but we could go to the calculator, we could press stat, we could press edit, number one, clear out that old data set, and then type in the new numbers. So 5.7, 5.67, and so on. All right, so I'm gonna type in all the data, I'll be right back. All right, I have all the numbers typed in now. So I'm gonna go to stat, calculate, one variable stat, I want L1 to be my list. I want to leave the frequency list blank because we only use that for weighted means and for expected values in chapter six. There I can see it's 5.702 and 0 0.04965. Remember, we want the S value. We don't know what sigma is. All right, so I will type those numbers into my formula. So this was 5.702 repeating technically because the two repeats and then it's over s over the square root of n, s was 0 0.04965, and n was 18. All right, now that's all very well and good. We found those numbers, but let's face it, we're not gonna be, have a great time trying to enter that into a calculator. But there's another way, and quite frankly, you didn't have to use one variable stats. If you look at your inferential statistics sheet, I tell you right at the top which test you should be using, the t-test. All right, so let's use the t-test. So if I go to clear this out, and I entered the data, and I went to stat, tests, and I choose number two, t-test. So let me grab that one. I have all my data in L1. My mu zero is 5.72, my null hypothesis, right? And don't use your enter key to get down from one to the next. Use your down arrow, because if you press enter, you'll always be picking the not equal to, although we actually want the not equal to in this particular one. Now, some people always get confused about this. What this is telling you is your alternative hypothesis. Your alternative was mu is not equal to mu zero, which was 5.72. So if you look at your alternative hypothesis, that's what you have. You have mu not equal to 5.72, so that's what you're picking right there. Then you go down to calculate and press enter. 
And there you have it. And look, it gives you X bar, 5.702. It gives you S, 0 0.04965. And it gives you 18 for, this, for N. And it tells you up at the top that T0, T, is negative 1.519. So negative 1.519. That's my T0 value. I'm going to need it later, so I'm going to underline it. All right, step four or step three is done. Let me put in step four. There we go. I drew the picture. So what you're doing is you're drawing the picture that shows up on your inferential statistics sheet over here on the left. You're drawing the two-tailed picture because this was a two-tailed test. So you draw a picture with two tails. You shade both the tails. And those bars there happen at the T0 value and the negative T0 value. Actually, the absolute value of the T0 value. So we have negative 1.519 over on the left and positive 1.519 over on the right. Then we also have the p-value is a double-sided arrow because the p-value that the calculator finds comes from both sides. So if you look at this, it says 0. 0.1471. See that right there? So that's why on the picture, I have 0. 0.147 up at the top. That's the p-value, and it's already taken care of that it's both sides. And that's what you want. You want both sides there. And those vertical bars are at negative 1.519 over here and positive 1.519 over here. You take the absolute value, that's the positive side. The negative absolute value is the negative side. All right, so now we have to make a decision. Are we going to reject or not? And the answer is we are not going to reject. So do not reject H0. Now why? Well, because you reject when your p-value is less than your alpha. Okay. If you look oop, there, if you look at the inferential statistics sheet, it says you reject H0 when your p-value is low. You know something's fishy when you have a low probability. So if we look at our problem, we don't have that low of a probability. Our p-value is 0 0.1471. And remember the p-value is obtained, just as a little note, note p-value from the t-test. So you get it from your t-test output in the calculator. All right, so we do not reject H0, and then you have to say why. Because the p-value, which is 0 0.1471, is not less, so put a slash through it, it's not less than your alpha, and you want it to be, which was 0 0.05 in this instance. So I think it was, yep, it was 0 0.05. All right, so that means that there is not enough evidence. There is not enough evidence to support the claim that the new state quarters, new state quarters, have a different weight than the old quarters. Done with that. Remember that setup we learned in section 10.1. Now let's redo steps four and five with the classical method. So remember that in the classical method, you need to look at alpha, not the z-score and not, not the t-score and not the p-value. So you're using a two-tailed test. You need alpha over two and t alpha over two. And you find them either using inverse t or the t-table with your degrees of freedom as n minus one. So Degrees of freedom is 17 for us. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So those would be the columns or rows we would go to in the t-table, or we can just use inverse t, 0 0.025 comma 17. And when we do that, we will get 2.110. Let me show you in the table. Here's the 0 0.025 column, and down here is 17. That's 2.110. Or in the calculator, inverse t, which is number 4, 0 0.02517. Enter. And that'll be the negative value. The table gives the positive value, but either way, it's 2.110. So then we use that as our critical value. So we, we technically want plus or minus on both of these. So plus or minus this, and that'll be plus or minus 2.110. And then what you do is you compare your number to that plus or minus. 
if your test statistic is greater than 2.110 or less than negative 2.110, you reject. So in other words, if you're in those dark tails, but of course we're not in those dark tails. And this is how we write it mathematically. We say that T0 is between this number, which is the negative t alpha over 2, and this number, which is the positive t alpha over 2. Since it's between them, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. Because when you look at the inferential statistics sheet, it says you reject if you're less than negative t alpha or above positive t alpha. In other words, if you're in the, the tail over on the left or the tail over on the right. And our value of negative 1.519 is not in either of those tails. In fact, it's about where this line is that I just drew, which is not nearly far enough over to be in the tails. And that's what we wrote right here.